Hello everyone, uh, this is Al-Fadi and uh, thank you of course for uh, watching uh, this uh, series. Thank you for all of your comments and your interactions with us about what we have covered so far, myself and Dr. J. Smith. We've covered a lot of grounds. We started the series by pointing out that our main focus is going to be on the quest to find the real Muhammad. Let's put it this way, will the real Muhammad please stand up? And that's what we're trying to do here. But in order to do that, we had to also give you some important foundations and backgrounds related to the uh, canonization of the Quran, the different canons of the Quran, the different qira'at, linguistic issues. But starting today, we are going to take a deep dive in order for us to begin to discuss Muhammad and the quest to find him. With that, of course, uh, uh, we have to uh, lean again on the uh, knowledge and the research and the data that has been uncovered for us by Dr. J. Smith. Dr. J., thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me. So, today we're going to talk about Muhammad and the quest to find him. Or we least, are, and we've been doing this. This is the quest we've been looking at, and now we're going to go zero in on one particular aspect. So, we've always said forget the 9th century, forget the 10th century. It's too late and too far. It's too far north, and it's too many hundreds of years later, two to three hundred years later. Let's go back to the 7th century. And one of the best things we have are coins. Now, here's what's interesting. We've known about the coins, but no one's really looked at it until I was there in London about a year ago. I was coming back. I was coming back from another country. I stopped in London, and I wanted to get up on the ladder at Speaker's Corner with Hatun Tosh. And she said, Jay, if you have some free time, I'd like to take you down to the British Museum. I want you to show you a gallery that they have just uh, uncovered, uh, opened up about Islam and all the great things it's done. In the, uh, in the, you know, in this 1,400 years supposedly of existence. And as we were going through the gallery, we came across some coins. And I looked at one of them, and it looked like it's saying that the, it had a reference to the Shahada, but it was attributing it to Ma'awiyah from 661. I said, no, no, no. no. Ma'awiyah, yeah. Ma'awi would not have had the Shahada that early. That was only introduced by Muhammad. I'm sorry, Abdul Malik. Their name Muhammad is only introduced on the coin, the part of the Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That was introduced in 692. I mean, is, isn't that amazing, Jay? You know, you have the Shahada, the Islamic creed, wasn't introduced in something like this until 692 at least. And Muhammad died in 632. That's 60 years after he died. They finally decided to talk about him, right. if indeed they are talking about him. Nonetheless, this bothered me. So I came back, so I'm going to look this up and see if I can find out what's going on. And as I came back to the States and I started looking at different articles, I came across uh, lots of articles on, by numismatists. They call them themselves numismatists, experts in coins. And they were writing about these coins. And I said, well, they're writing about it, but they're also, they're a little confused because they don't know what to do with these images on the coins from the seventh century because it does not jive with what we now see in the ninth and 10th century. And they were concerned because the ninth and 10th century is very clear that Muhammad and anybody else after him does not allow images on coins. So I started to do a little bit more uncovering. And so in January of this year, in 2020, I decided to start putting up these videos on Fander Films. And as I put up videos, one of the great things about YouTube is that you get comments. And people started commenting, well, yes, I'm an expert in the coin. A guy named Odin Lafontaine from France who has been done a whole study of these coins for over 20 years. And he started po pointing me to other people that you need to read. Uh, uh, bakers, uh, a guy named ba Baker, uh, and these other interesting characters who all were writing about coins were numismatists and they were experts in the field they're writing articles and they were all asking the same question trying to force the ninth and 10th century traditions onto what they were seeing on these coins right so i said suggested to people like odin well, why don't you forget about the ninth and 10th century and just describe the coins as they are look at them and see what's going in front of you and that's what I want to do real quickly. I'm not, we're not, this is, we don't have much time. Go look up the videos. I put up about 10 right. videos and, just and on the coins. And you and I are going to do another series on that alone. So uh, Just now, on the coins. Yeah. It'll take too long. When I did it for, when I did it about two months ago for about 120 people, it took me two hours to get through the coins. I'm not going to take two hours. Let's just, first of all, let's look at this map that's there that we want to show you. This is, let's take a look at this map and th this shows you the problem that exists. That, look at the brown area. Uh, that's the Muslim supposedly the Muslim world. They say Islamic world. There was no word word called Muslim or Islam that early. Nonetheless, this is what people today assume was uh, the name at that time. But can you look, that brown area is the only part that they actually controlled. Not very much. Until you get the 
the, the caliphs come into power. Once the right. caliphs come into power, uh, from 632 up until 661, known as the Rashidun period, then expands up to the orange area. Do you see the orange area? That's so you're right. talking all the way from Afghanistan in the east, all the way to Tripoli in the west. That's right. That whole orange area, that includes Afghanistan, Balochistan, Iran today, uh, Syria, Hadramat, Yemen, uh, Arabia, Egypt, and uh, part of what we now know is Tripoli, which is Libya. Now, please, when I'm using these words, these are the modern names, okay? Okay. It makes sense, uh, Jay. You have to use modern names. You have to use modern names, lost please. Names Their name is the hidden uh, Baghdad. There, even this map has Baghdad there. That's not the name. I mean, Yasser Qadi got accept me for using that word. Of course, it's not the name until the ninth century. But remember, that's we're, we're still talking about the seventh century. That would be the name that we, people today would recognize. So, but look at that swath of land. That's a huge swath of land, isn't it? Enormous well, swath yeah, of land. Exactly. And it's then after the Umayyad period from 661 up to 750 is the purple area is added. But I'm just looking at the orange and the brown area. That's the area I'm interested in right now because the coins are in, being introduced in 620, 630, 640, 650 up until 692. That's the period I want to. I want to look at the first 60 years of is, supposedly Islam according to the traditions. All right? What do the coins tell us? Now, remember... Whenever a caliph comes to power, like Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, who comes to power there from 632 up until 661, you have those four caliphs. What's the first thing they do to announce themselves? They use coins. Mm. Coins are used for commerce, but they're also used to announce somebody because when they come to power, they want to make sure that people know who they are. And they, as I said earlier in another live stream we did, that where I said you don't have newspapers, they didn't have internet, they didn't have radio and television, all the rest. They had to use coins because coins would get in the hands of everybody. That's the quickest way and the best way to announce I'm the new man on the back. I am the new the way, leader. They do this today. They even, still do it today. Know, in the paper money. And, and the, also the coins. And the coins. But today we use images of people who are historically famous or someone who's done a great invention. We don't really introduce uh, the person who's ruling. Today we don't. But back then they did because that's the only way they could really announce their right. uh, announce their ascendancy. So coins were very important, hugely important. So now slow, go back to the slides and let's take a look and see where these coins were minted. Well, uh, in the West, all in the West, they're minted up there in what is today Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. That's the names I use today. Syria, Lebanon, Israel. They weren't used that. Those are not the names back then. In the East, they're all minted in Iran. Let's look at another map and show you, and let's do the sequence of what we're talking about. So take a look at that map there. I've got it up on the slide. And notice that everything that Muslims tell us has supposedly taken place down here in Mecca right. Medina, right? right. We said this over and over again. That's where the 9th century and the 10th century tell us all this was happening. That's where Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali all lived. They lived in Medina. No, they did not. Because if they lived in Medina, they would be minting coins with their names on it from that area. Look and see where all the mints come from. In the West, all the coins were coming from places like Tartus, Hims, Baalbek, Dimash, Daratibaria, Abilia, Baisan, Jadas, Jubna, Amman, and Ilya. Excuse me for desecrating those words. Look and see where those mints are. Not one of them is down in Mecca and Medina. They're all hundreds of miles further north, all in the West. And those coins would have been gold solidusses or copper coins, gold and copper. All of them are too far in the north to be anywhere near Mecca and Medina. But they were minting them. This is all under the area of the Arabs at that time. What about the east? Well, their coins were being minted in the east as well. Where are those mints? Well, here they are. Susa, Dasht, Arajan, Bishapur, Tanbuk, Olskar, uh, Kezarun, Adashar, Kura, Darabjir, and Kavat Kura. Excuse me for those who are Pahlavi. I'm desecrating your language. But I'm just reading what's there on the text. Take a look at those. Those are too far north again, right? Right. Yet this is all where the Rashidun period existed. This is where you should have not Muhammad. Muhammad would just be in Mecca Medina if the traditions were correct. But Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali would all have been in this area, especially Umar on. All of this area, they have the mints. They are now in charge of the mints. They are minting coins. It's not that they stop minting coins. They are minting coins. And we can look at those coins. But you notice every one of these, all of these mints would have been under the authority of any Arab leader at that time or caliph at that time in the 7th century, including any Muslim caliph, right? Conclusion, none of these mints were from the Hejaz. Instead, they were all situated too far north. Right. Now, let's go look at these coins. Because when you look at these coins, I'm just going to put them all up there and I'm going to unpack this, this, this slide here. Because these coins, notice from 624 to 660, 
There are no Islamic coins whatsoever. The coins are there. Look at the ones here on the left at the bottom. Look at the timeline from 632 up until 651. There are coins. But take a look at what the man's holding. Take a look at what he's got. This Arab leader, he's there on the left. He is holding a cross in his hand and he has a cross up on his head. How can you be a Muslim and have crosses on your head and holding in your hand? I uh, wonder how our Muslim friends going to explain that. They cannot explain that. No one's bothered to explain that. We've only introduced this in this year. This is just coming out in 2020. Now look at 661. Take a look at Mu'awiyah. Mu'awiyah they should explain because Mu'awiyah is a Muslim, correct? Mu'awiyah is a Muslim. That's he right. comes from 661 up to 680. So for 20 years, roughly 20 years, a little over 20 years, he is the Caliph. He's living in Damascus. Isn't that interesting? Why is it we've been told that? Why is he not living in Medina like everybody else? I mean, that's the interesting part, is like you, you keep talking about the, uh, you know, uh, the rightly guided caliphs in Medina, not even in Mecca, by the way, but then you begin to see these dynasties either in Damascus or in modern-day Iraq and Baghdad. Why? Why didn't they go back to the origin of Islam, to Medina, okay. for instance? Exactly. For one very good reason, nothing is happening that far south. We can't find any any rock inscriptions. We can't find any coins. We can't find anything down that far south. They're all in the north. He is up in Damascus, which makes sense because that's where all the mints are as well. They're all in that area that I showed you in the slide before. Now take a look at what he introduces. His coins in the west. His coins in the west are all Christian. His coins in the east are all Zoroastrian. And you can see them, they're, they're, they're his images on them. Why would he put his image if he was a Muslim? Muslims don't put images on. All of these coins have images. Even Mu'awiyah's coins have images. In the east, they're all silver. In the west, they're copper and they're gold. Right. That's fascinating. So even, even as you go up to Mu'awiyah, Christian symbols in the west, Zoroastrian symbols in the east. Interesting, he introduces Allah's name, Bismillah. Now, what does Bismillah mean? In the name of Allah. In the name of Allah. Hold on. Muslims say, ah, that proves he's a Muslim. Is that so? What and who uses the name Allah? Well, we know now that uh, even the Syriac uh, Christians would use that. Everybody who spoke Arabic right. used Allah. It comes from Navity and Aramaic. Right. It is Ilaha. It is the Arabic name for God. The Christians would have used Allah. The Zoroastrians would have used Allah. The Jews would have used Allah. Even the pagans would have used the exactly. word Allah. Exactly. The Quran says the pagans use Allah. Everybody uses yeah. the name Allah. That exactly. is not a Muslim. And what's the name of Muhammad's father? Abdullah. Abdullah, slave yeah. of God. Exactly. Now. Interestingly, then in Ma'awiyah introduces another coin where it says, Bismillah al-Malik. Al-Malik means the king. He's referring right. to himself. That's right. Praise be the name of God, the king. Right. So he's basically looking at himself as a messianic figure. And yet here he is, a Zoroastrian on the backside of this, that coin, mm -hmm. proving that he is not a Muslim. There's nothing Islamic about any of these coins. Muslims have come to me and says, take a look. If you look very carefully, you can see that they have a moon and a star. Ah, that must be Muslim because that's on the flags. No, the Sassanians, all your Persians, <coughs> these are all in the east. These are all mints coming out of what is today Iran. Not then it was called Iran. It was called Sassan the Sassanid area. And those, with all those mints, they would have all been Sassanian. And the, 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 uh, the symbol for authority in the Sassanid empire from the second century AD was a moon and a star. This has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with authority. It has to do with Persian authority. Now. So nothing about anything Islamic at all at, the, at this period. It's not till we get to 692. Come to look at the gold coin there. 692, he takes, this is Abdul Malik. He is the son of, Ma, of Marwan. He is of the Marwan and Caliphate. They are the part of the family that have the, it's usurped the uh, Sufyanis who control from, from Mu'awiyah's Mu time, from 660 uh, one up until about 680. Marwan comes to power. His son is the one that we said earlier in another episode. He is the one that now wants to really put down his identity, his Arab identity. And he, of course, he has to pay homage to good old Justinian II, the Byzantine emperor. And he's living in Damascus, so he's right up next to the Byzantine Empire. Again, living up in Damascus. What does he do? He introduces that first coin. That first coin has the image. It's a copy of the Byzantine golden solar disc, but instead of Justinian and his two sons, he put his image and his two sons on it. And that's why he puts it down there and he takes off the cross that's there and he puts up on the back side, you can see is a the cross piece has been taken off the Byzantine cross. It's a mockery of the Byzantine cross. Justinian gets so upset that he goes to war against Abdul Malik in 692. 
So what does Abdul Malik do? He then introduces the second one. Look where 693 is there. See that coin of himself. That's himself with the sword. Basically, he said, I'm going to war. And around the obverse side, including both of these coins, you have the La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, which is the, the Shahada. Right. But he's referring to himself as the praise one of God. He is the praise one of God. He's basically a grand line. So just like Mu'awiyah did with Al-Malik, he's doing with Muhammad Rasulullah. I am the praised one. He also introduces that on the Dome of the Rock. We talked about that earlier. He introduces that on the inner ambulatories of the Dome of the Rock. He also introduces that on the Crota Protocols in 691. The Caliph Protocols, which are the official documents that we now have today, and that's where Yehuda, Yehuda Nevo has done his work. That is a declaration of war that he has right there. And then we get to 696. 696, he introduces those two golden coins and the, and the silver ones above it. Those are a real declaration against Byzantine Christianity. Because if you look at them, he takes the images off completely and only uses Arabic script. This is the Shahada there. It is against, it has also chapter 4, verse 170, 171 there. And it refers to the fact that God is not one, God is not three, sorry, God is not three, God is one, and he has no son. Well, who is that do you think that's attacking? He is attacking the Trinity, it's attacking Jesus' divinity, and it's attacking his sonship. Right. The three things that are at the root of everything we believe, that God, Jesus is God, that he is one of three, that he also is the Son of God and God the Father. At the same time, on the back side of the coin, they says, and he has no associates, that's again attacking, God, attacking Jesus, and we will be superior to any other any others who come against us. So this is really a declaration against Byzantine Christianity. From that time on, there are no more images. So the imagery is thrown out in 696. And from 696 all the way until today, no images are now permitted. So it has nothing to do with the traditions, the traditional account that the Muhammad said this. Muhammad had nothing against, if there was a Muhammad, we now, know, as you're gonna see later on, there is no Muhammad. But can you see the coins now show that this is <coughs> sequence that happens from the beginning of 628, 630, 640. We have all these different rulers who are putting their images on, and you always put your image, you always put the date, you always put a icon of what religion you belong to. And in the West, they were all Christian. In the East, they were all Zoroastrian. That continues up through Ma'awiyah's reign all the way up until Abdul Malik, who then introduces finally a I would say a Muslim nomenclature. That begins with him in 692, but is really put into place in 696. From 696 on, then you see that he then ha has all these uh, claim after claim after claim against Byzantine Christianity. And the reason why, as we said in another episode, those were his greatest threat. His biggest competition were not the Sassanians, were not the Persians, were not the Zoroastrians. They were Byzantine Christianity because they were the other superpower of his day. So this is a political statement, as Robert Spencer said on the live stream, and this is a theological statement. That's why the Dome of the Rock was built the same time these coins come out. The Dome of the Rock was built the same time to show a one-upmanship. From that time on, from up until today, all the coins now have that that uh, that th those kind of scripts on it. No more images. So if you look at the coins, you can see the sequence of how Islam started to begin. But this is just the beginning, the nascent Islam. This is not the Islam we know today. That we're going to yet introduce. So hold on to there. Can you see how damaging these coins are? So what are we going to cover next time? Uh, we're then now going to go into the inscriptions. The rock inscriptions will be the next thing that support exactly what the coins are telling us. The rock inscriptions are telling us. Why should we be surprised? Surprised I'm not. Because if you're going to look at the evidence from the 7th century and you're seeing what's on the ground, you need to follow the evidence as it's shown to you. As we said before, the more we scratch, the more we find. The more we find, the more we shine. The more we shine, the more they whine all sublime. Folks, that's exactly what we're going to find when we go into the next episode. Well, fascinating. Thank you so much, of course, as always, for sharing this information with us. Hopefully, everyone is enjoying uh, these uh, series. And uh, you can see how we are laying, rolling out, if you wish, the evidence for you concerning that question or concerning this quest, a quest to find the real Muhammad. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. We can't make these quality videos without the help of partners like you. So please consider becoming a Patreon supporter today at patreon.com forward slash Sierra International. I want to make sure you always get notified when we release a new video. So please click the bell to be notified. And of course, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If this video was helpful to you, 
please click the thumbs up. Thank you.